emphasize that open borders have serious national security implications. Joining us now with analysis, retired CIA senior intelligence officer Daniel Hoffman, former member of the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force Steve Rogers. Steve, the tragic shooting of a California police officer by an illegal immigrant, uh, known gang affiliations, doesn't that underscore that there are legitimate safety and national security concerns at risk here, which is why there needs to be not just border security, but a wall? It certainly proves President Trump's point, Greg. Look, President Trump has been very consistent. He is making decisions based on national security. Two words that are not in the vocabulary of the Democrats. So here we have a president who's saying, look, we're going to do everything we could to stop the influx of, of, of weapons, of drugs, of those things that threaten national security. And let's keep one thing in mind, too. He went to the border. He talked to police officers. He talked to border agencies. He got their recommendations. Management by walking around. That was, that's what Abe Lincoln did. So President Trump goes down, gets the recommendations of those who are being confronted and challenged by criminals, and he made the decision that's what has to be done, the wall. Dan Hoffman, uh, given your background with the CIA, talk to us about the safety and national security concerns uh, that may be at risk without a wall and without proper border security. So I think there's no question that uh, constructing a wall, strategic locations with sensors, surveillance, and uh, dedicated border patrol uh, can be a last line of defense against transnational criminals and the potential for terrorists uh, to use what is in some places a very porous border. I think there's other things we need to do. My, from my experience at CIA, I think we need to get out front of this, uh, work with our Mexican partners. We've had some pretty good collaboration with them. We need to hit the cartels pretty hard so that we reduce the drug flow into the United States. And then separately, we need um, E-Verify so that illegal aliens can't work here and, and a visa tracking system because roughly 40% of illegal aliens are overstaying their visas. What I don't understand, Greg, as a citizen, uh, I'm just chagrined at the breakdown in legislative process. If the cost of, of comprehensive immigration reform is about $5 billion, I don't understand why we just can't get it done. And I think, as Pam Bondi said, do a little compromise. Yeah, but, uh, you know, maybe it's coming down to semantics, uh, Steve, because you know, the president wants a wall. And some Democrats are saying, well, offense would be okay. I mean, that's just a silly semantical argument, isn't it? It sure is. And Dan said something very interesting that nobody wants to talk about, the potential of terrorists crossing that border right. with a weapon much, much larger than a rifle or a pistol. So I've got to give President Trump a lot of credit for having some vision and some forethought on maybe just preventing something like that from happening. That's why, Greg, the wall is important. Yeah, Dan, um, you know, I hear Democrats uh, and the media which I realize is redundant, um, say, oh, you know, you build a wall that's 12 feet tall, they'll get a 13-foot uh, ladder. How do you respond to something like that? I'm going to invoke the late Charles Krauthammer, who used to say that we need to reduce the river of illegal immigration to a trickle. Is the, war, is the border wall a panacea? No. Is it going to stop all illegal immigration? No. But it's going to reduce it and make it harder for uh, illegal immigration to take place in our country. And that will de-incentivize people from making what is an arduous journey where many of them risk and sometimes lose their lives. Do we know of cases where terrorists have come across the southern border, Dan? I think there's been a lot of speculation. I remember quite well when the late Senator John McCain was grilling DHS Undersecretary for Intelligence Francis Taylor back in 2015 about transnational criminals crossing the border and whether there have been terrorists who were detected crossing that border. And honestly, Undersecretary Taylor really didn't do a whole lot to convince me that DHS was able to detect whether terrorists were crossing the border or whether they in fact had in the, at some point in the past detected them. And regardless, terrorists are always looking for the soft spots to exploit, the vulnerabilities to exploit. Uh, we know that from 9-11. And so if we see a vulnerability, best to shut it down before someone exploits it to their advantage. And, and, and uh, again, we don't want those threats uh, visited on our shores.
Yeah. Steve, I see you nodding your head at that. You, you agree completely. Uh, Dan, Dan has got this uh, nailed down because MS-13 gang members are terrorists and they're looking for avenues to get into this country. And without a wall there, it makes it much, much easier for them to get in. And, and another point Dan made, look, at, you can get a strong door. There'll be a burglar who'll be able to get in that door. Sure. But it buys time. It buys time for the police to respond That's and right. to do what they are trained to do. Yeah, I mentioned ladders and, you know, not everybody can bring a ladder to the wall, and you're right. Uh, it's like a red flag. Yes, uh, you know, we can see that coming. Uh, Dan, Steve, thank you both for being with us. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Coming up, the illegal immigrant cop killer.